I'm Mackie Kravitz. I'm a sophomore theater major, and this is my second semester hosting CU at USC, and I am so excited to be back. A few things that I learned from last semester that I'm going to implement this year is really being comfortable and really like putting my personality into those interviews and making it less structured and more like a conversation. Hopefully that'll bring out the guest personality and give them a platform to speak out about their experiences and share them with the world. We have some really exciting guests for you guys on Wednesday nights. I know for a fact we have the Dean of the School of Dramatic Arts coming on. We'll get to speak to producers, directors, magicians, chefs, TV personalities, everything around the sun and What's going to make Wednesday nights different from any other night on CU is we are going to have fun. This is bad with words today, I'm sorry. Welcome back to See You at USC. I'm Mackie Kravitz and I am so excited to be your new Wednesday night host. Tonight we have photojournalist and USC Annenberg professor Mickey Turner joining us. It's going to make for a great episode so be sure to stay tuned. Welcome back to See You at USC. I'm joined now by Mickey Turner. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Now, Mickey, you are a woman that wears many different hats. Yes. And I want to <laughs> let you explain kind of your journey to where you got now. So take it away. Wow, where to start? <laughs> um, well, you know, I actually started writing when I was very young. I used to make up these stories and draw these characters and make up stories about them uh, because I used to read like a lot of these teen magazines. And so I would write these stories about these people I made up who were very famous. Huh. <laughs> and, so uh, wanting that entertainment culture. Type right, of. right, right. But I also was very into photography as a kid. And one of the things my parents used to do for me when I got good grades or when I, you know, advanced from one grade to another or for birthdays, Christmas, they would always give me a camera. Hmm. So I had like dozens of cameras and I, I used to love taking pictures. And it was kind of a family thing. My dad used to take these uh, Super 8 movies of us all the time <laughs> with no sound. So, you know, you're just going like walking down the street there. You, know, you can't hear anything we're saying. And my grandmother um, was quite a shutterbug. You know, she loved to travel and take uh, shots on her travels. And so, you know, I've, I kind of feel like it was an inherited trait, but mm -hmm. um, I really didn't do too much with the photography until I got to college and took a couple of classes and then fell in love with it even more and you know of course those, that was back in the days when we still shot film <laughs> and uh, before digital <laughs> before digital and um, you know f I went to graduate school and studied pho photojournalism at Boston University and then go Terriers go Terriers there you go <laughs> bean town and uh, then I moved to New York with all my European trust fund babies and got into other <laughs> things I had like 19 jobs in New York I was like an <laughs> advertising I worked at Random House and what was your major when you were going to college and going uh, to Mass media arts. So my, I, my best grades were in TV, but when mm -hmm. I got out of school, the job was in print. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of got pigeonholed in that. And then my first job uh, outside of an internship was a sports writer. And I was like the first black female sports writer in Virginia. Or so they say, I don't know if there's ways to qualify this, but I never saw anyone You'll else who looked like You'll take the title. Me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, um, you know, got that sports bug. And uh, when I, um, I remember I was in Virginia and I was kind of in between jobs and my dad called me at six in the morning from Cincinnati. And I was so mad, I'm like, why are you calling me? And he had read in the Cincinnati Enquirer about this program at Cal Berkeley, uh, which was a minority uh, summer, summer program for minority journalists at hmm. the Maynard Institute. And uh, he said, yeah, you should apply for this. And I said, okay, what's what's the deal? He said, oh, the deadline is tomorrow. 
They're like, oh yeah, and this is in the <laughs> days before you know faxes and. You Did you know, have to mail in the application? I like had put a stamp to, well, on I had it? to fed, I had to FedEx it, which cost a lot of money. Yeah. But I called them beforehand. I said, "Look, I just heard about this. I really want to apply." So they gave me like an extra day. Oh. But I had to write an 800-word essay. I had to t get passport photos. It was all this stuff, you know, trying to mm -hmm. get it done um, after five because I was working at a camera shop, you know, just to make ends meet, and so mm -hmm. I didn't get off until five. And so then I was working in Norfolk and I lived in Hampton, so you have to go under that bridge, which could take any any time from, you know, twenty to twenty minutes mm -hmm. to an hour. So yeah. that day it took like an hour. Of course. And yeah. And then <laughs> you know, this is the day before computers too, so I'm on my typewriter typing, you know, these statements and these essays and so but it all turned out well. I did end up at Berkeley and as part of that uh, gig you or part of that experience mm -hmm. you got a full-time job at a daily newspaper and I mm -hmm. was blessed and fortunate to be able to stay in the Bay Area and work for Bob and Nancy Maynard who were the first uh, African-American owners of a daily newspaper Very and cool. uh, became a sports columnist there the first African-American female uh, at a well sports columnist at a major daily newspaper so yeah. that's a qualifier <laughs> and um, you know my career that that trajectory just went zzz. I remember I wrote this column about this football coach whose whole family was involved in the Friday night game it's a high school dude and mm -hmm. um, it, it from people read that and just zzz. and I wasn't even supposed to be writing a column I mean they made it into they made it into a column by sticking my mug above it it was it's not even a column it was just a feature story and from that point on, I got another column um, that was basically, you know, dedicated for women, women's sports. Mm. And that was cool and that was innovative as well. So it, it was a good time. Definitely. Yeah. It sounds very interesting. Yeah. So when you say you got a column, was that a photo column or was that a journalism that was writing a journal column? That was a writing column. Um, the, one of the reasons why I didn't shoot at the Oakland Tribune is because back then, union rules would not allow you to write and shoot. What? Yeah, yeah. So, but I was very fortunate in that our photographers actually won the Pulitzer my first year there because we had that big earthquake, that Loma mm -hmm. Prieta 7.1 earthquake. And I'm three months into California when that happened. Oh, gosh. And I'm like, ooh. And you're still here, so. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, ooh, look at the time. Time to, <laughs> time to get back to the East Coast. But um, I did end up staying, and Angela Pancrazio, who was... Uh, one of the photographers there, unfortunately he, she has passed away, uh, did this shot of um, this uh, woman who was just going like this, you know, praying after the earthquake. Uh -huh. And I think I have the only copy outside the paper of that. And uh, she also did this great shot that kind of anchored uh, that package where uh, she was at the courthouse and a clock had fallen on the floor with the exact time of the earthquake. It was like 508, 509, something like that. And wow. she has this great shot of the clock. But I learned a lot from her, just watching her. And um, we had Michael Maycor, all these guys, Pulitzer Prize winners, and they were just terrific. Mm -hmm. So they made me, they inspired me even more. And mm -hmm. when I came down here, uh, I was a sports writer still. I went to the Orange County Register and again, they they had that same funky rule. But so it was <laughs> years later before I really started getting back into the photojournalism mm -hmm. thing again. It actually started with a book that I was doing called Jour Journey to the Woman I've Come to Love. And that book took like six years only because I, I you know, I got tired of it. I wasn't going to do it at all. And then, you know, all these great I kept encountering all these great women. I was like, oh, you got to be in the book. So I finally gave up my film cameras, invested in some digital equipment, and just started shooting madly. Mm -hmm. And um, that's when I kind of got back into the photography aspect of it. But I did, you know, I do still write from time to time. Uh, you know, r now I don't pitch things much anymore. Mm -hmm. If someone comes to me and says, hey, can you write this or do this story? If I feel like it, I do mm -hmm. it. But, you know, my job here at SC keeps me very busy. <laughs> and uh, so there's not a lot of time to do that kind of stuff. But one of the cool things I'm able to do now is that I work with the Pavlov Foundation, which is an organization that teaches kids with cancer how oh. to take pictures. And I'm working with a young woman who lives around this neighborhood 
actually she's 15 and she's she's you can't even tell she's sick you know she's oh. just like on it she's a spitfire and she wants to be a fashion model <laughs> and uh you know she's great so uh that that fulfills me in so many ways that mm -hmm. all this other stuff doesn't but it's all good that pab love that you're talking about sounds really really interesting i want to learn more about the can so are these kids inspired in photography or it just gives them something to kind of work for well you know some of them are quite good some of them are better than i am you know which is really <laughs> scary uh but they you know they well we have mentors and the mentors go to the homes of the uh, students every saturday for like eight weeks mm -hmm. and they have homework assignments and you know there's always kind of a theme and then at the end of the program we take all the shots and frame them, and then they sell them to oh. uh, you know uh, to fund cancer research. So that sounds like such a great program. Yeah, that's it so is. cool. I never knew about it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, what are the, some of the tips that you're teaching these kids on how to take photos? Uh, basically, composition and angles. Um, you know, and a lot of a lot of people who want to be great photographers rush it. Mm -hmm. You know, you kind of have to sit back and assess the situation a little bit. And I'm, I teach them that you know, the soul of the photograph, particularly if you're shooting people, it's always in their eyes. Like I'm looking at your eyes now and I'm thinking of the shot <laughs> I could do. What's the shot? You Let's know, it. it's like, I would call it happy pensive. Oh. You know, I would not have you smile. I would just like, there you go, and go, boom, <laughs> okay? And you know, just twirl around you a little bit. But I, you know, I'm one of those photographers who likes to shoot on continuous. So I go, and because I do that, you know, you get some happy accidents that way. Well, continuous shots must be helpful in sports. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You have to do that in sports. Uh, but a lot of times when I'm shooting portraits as well, I do that. I uh, did a uh, sort of marketing campaign for um, an artist named Laurel Holloman. And we were shooting in her studio. We had great shots, but there was that one shot that she was looking down for half a second. She had a a paintbrush in her teeth and <laughs> um, she was standing against one of her paintings which was huge and that was the shot her sponsor liked and that was the shot that ran on these buses and water taxis in Venice Italy you know all over the place mm -hmm. and so you know like I said that was just an accident you're explaining these like candid moment shots that we all yeah. try to get with our iPhones yeah. like one two three yeah <laughs> like see the iphone is a little <laughs> slow but you know i teach a class that's mobile based and really? you know the iphones have really come up i mm -hmm. hear this i haven't gotten the seven yet but i hear the seven oh, camera like is amazing cameras, yeah yeah, yeah 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 i don't know much but yeah high so, quality yeah so i'm anxious to uh try that i just don't like the plans that they have now that you mm. have to like really essentially buy the phone so <laughs> I understand that. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. So that. I've still got my little six, and uh, you know, we'll and see how long it goes. And it shoots great photos. Sometimes. <laughs> it's, I'm, it's always full. You know, I get the, in front of this great shot, and it's like, storage is full. Oh. You know, so I need to dump some things, but that's always the case. Definitely. Well, we're going to take a quick commercial break, but when okay. we get back, be sure to stay tuned with more about Mickey Turner and her photo expertise. Woo we'll be back in a flash. Oh, <laughs> hey. <laughs> Hello, this is Stewie Griffin, and you're watching Trojan Vision. You're watching the Lion Center voted the number one squash courts on campus. Brought to you by Trojan Vision.
Welcome back to See You at USC. I am joined by Mickey Turner, who is a photojournalist and a USC Annenberg professor. Now, before the break, we were talking about your early life, some of your passions that you found. Right. On the second half, I want to focus more on your galleries and the okay. things that you have shot. So can you tell us a little bit more about your collections? Uh, well, my website is basically sort of a hodgepodge of everything that I do. Uh, I don't do so much red carpet stuff anymore because I find it really humiliating. <laughs> um, but no, Paparazzi? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, when I used to shoot the Oscars, you know, the funny thing is when, when you go to the Oscars, the whole, you know, they'll have the paparazzi just as people are getting out of the limo. So the people get out of the limo and they're all grumpy and then they see the paparazzi and they're like, oh, ah, ah. <laughs> and then they're done. And I always wanted to be around the corner because, you know, they're not guarded anymore. They're mm -hmm. not posing anymore. And so I remember one of my favorite years was the year that Slumdog Millionaire okay. was up. And those little kids, oh my God, they were running around the red car. Meryl Streep was going, oh my God, you know, <laughs> and they were just like going up to Daniel Craig and everybody was just embracing them. And it was just, oh my, you'd never seen a red carpet like that. They were just like, ah! It's real. Yeah. yeah. And it was so, so cool. And, but what you get, you know, when you're right there at the entrance or in the bleachers, um, is you just get really cool, candid moments. And I think one of my favorites is uh, Penelope Cruz and Kate Winslet walking in to the theater and they have their arms around each other and they're like whispering to each other. And I'm like, you know, they're probably saying, I got this girl, Talking you got smack. this, yeah, you got <laughs> this. And they both did win that night. Huh. So um, that's like one of my favorite shots there. But, um, and there's some cool stuff with uh, Sarah Jessica Parker, who's my home girl from Cincinnati, that's <laughs> in the city. And, um, you know, I got a wonderful shot of uh, Viola Davis, you know, before she was really as known as she is then. She will win this year. That's the, the fix is in there. She <laughs> put herself in the supporting category. That was a smart thing, mm -hmm. even though that's not a supporting role in mm -mm. Fences. Mm -mm. So, but, you know, <laughs> hey. Anyways. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and I, lo I love to shoot travel stuff. I love to travel in Africa. Uh, I, you know, one of the things I don't do well still is shooting animals in the bush. They just don't cooperate for me, <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, I love shooting the people in the bush. And one of my most iconic shots, uh, Zulu Eyes, is a little boy that uh, I caught at one of the villages. And I was on my way out, actually, and he came out of his little hut. And I turned around, I was like, oh my God, those eyes. And I only got two frames of him before he left, but one of them is on the cover of my book tomorrow. And uh, I went back two years later and saw that kid again. He had grown up, he wasn't as cute, but oh. you see, no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, it was great to see him again. I showed him the shot and he, he had no reaction whatsoever. He's like, I wanna go back and play, you know. And, so. <laughs> Wow, that's yeah. awesome. So you follow, do you mostly follow up with your clients or people that you photograph? Um, not always, because I shoot a lot of candidates. I'm more of a street photographer. Yeah. And a lot of times, if I take the train to work, um, I'm just like with my iPhone, like going like Zoe this all the time. Zoe told us about that in the pre-production yeah. office. Yeah. Have you ever gotten in like legal issues? Yeah. Nothing like that? No, because, no you know, legally, everybody on the street is fair game. Hmm. You know, you know, ethically, everybody on the street is fair game. So the only time someone, you know, rolled up on me was on the Metro and I wasn't even shooting her and she thought I was and she made this big stink and I was like, sit down. Do you see this? This is quality. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, Showed her. Uh, yeah. So other than sports and entertainment, mm -hmm. what has been your favorite thing to photograph? Wow, um, I think just candidates on the street. You know, I'm not your nature girl. I'm not the landscape girl. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I certainly don't enjoy shooting buildings or anything like that. I just like capturing really magical moments uh, of people as they're going through their day to day. Mm -hmm. I can see that through the stories that you've shared yeah. tonight so far. Yeah. So what are you working now at USC Annenberg? What, what are you up to? What's well, next? I'm teaching three <laughs> classes this semester photojournalism, visual journalism, and uh, sports commentary. And we've just started a mentoring program. We call it ARM. It's Annenberg Resources and Mentoring. And we're getting ready to do a joint program with uh, the mentoring programs from Gould and Marshall, where we're going to do hmm. a screening of a new show on Fox called Shots Fired. 
uh and um you know we're just trying to get that rolling so it's you know it's for all students it, you know it's for students of color first generations international students but it's for everybody mm -hmm. just to have a safe space to hang out and exchange ideas and i'm um i did kind of a trump thing you know how tr people say trump didn't really think he was going to win um, I submitted huh. a proposal for uh, an exhibition in Paris thinking that it wasn't going to happen. And it did, and now I'm like, oh God, I gotta do the work. <laughs> so, but it's gonna be with a young Filipino artist who's just amazing. He's a visual artist and he does photography as well. Mm -hmm. And we've come up with this concept where we're going to, I'm gonna shoot emotions and he's going to paint them. And we're gonna huh. put them side by side. So it'll be at the Pantheon town hall uh probably in mid 2018 wow yeah so for all our overseas viewers be sure to check this out in paris yeah that's incredible yeah, yeah. so do you work with most artists have you done a collaboration like that before in the past i've i've been in joint shows i was in a joint show in saudi arabia uh, a couple of years ago and um i curate a lot of shows at annenberg with student work mm -hmm and my work and this past summer I was fortunate enough to go to uh, the Philippines. A uh, friend of mine, Luis Cinco, who's a Pulitzer Prize winning photographer at the LA Times has this workshop there. So I went along with him and that was just great mm -hmm. um, shooting uh, there. And that's where I met the young Filipino artist, Hershley. And um, you know, this summer I just kind of want to chill. I'm, I, I am <laughs> going to Ethiopia for uh, a couple of weeks to do some shooting there. It's sort of a mission trip with uh, mm -hmm. a, a friend from the Keck School mm -hmm. who's in charge of family me medicine there. And they're, they're going on, uh, you know, kind of a health missionary um, trip. So I'm just gonna, you know, sit back and shoot it. And uh, then I'm, I just want to go to an island and chill. <laughs> you know, just chill. I, I love scuba diving, so I was able to dive in the Philippines, which was just amazing. And I just want to go do some diving, you know, drink some blue drinks and you know, <laughs> relax. And relax, because I break. really am tired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you with all the things yeah. that you've said you've done. If you could travel anywhere right now to show life in mm. your photography, where would it be and why? I really have always wanted to go to Botswana. And um, I want to go back to Kenya. I haven't been to Kenya in like 17 years. And, um, you know, I really haven't done too much in Asia. So I want to go to Thailand. And, uh, but I really kind of want to go to the parts of Africa that I haven't been and sh really show what life is like there. Because a lot of times people go to Africa and they think, oh, the poor little Africans are living in mud huts and all this. But you know, what you've got to look at is their resolve. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know what else is out there, then you're content and happy with what you have. And that's what happens. And my favorite story from Africa was the first time I went to Kenya and I was at this game lodge. And a woman came to carry my bags and I felt guilty. I was like, I can carry them. She's like, uh -huh. no, no. And so she said, um, my sister was lost. And I'm like, your sister is lost? She said, my sister got lost. I'm like, what happened to your sister? She, she said the Dutch and the British took her, but now she's back. And she was talking about me. And I was just like, oh man, that was so deep. That was so deep. And um, I just, huh. you know, love the people there and especially the kids. The kids run up to you and they're like, take my picture, take <laughs> you know, and they, they just grab onto you just like, for dear life mm -hmm. and it's it's just an amazingly warm and fuzzy feeling yeah well I love photography as a way to see life yes. as it really is and especially with all your candid pictures and the way right. that your style it sounds like you're really focusing in on that and that's great I yeah. love that I love yeah. hearing about and that. I love shooting Trojans too <laughs> well, <laughs> headshots? do you do headshots I do do headshots <laughs> I do you know I, it was crazy because I saw like there's a truck for headshots and I'm like why not think of that like yeah there's a truck that goes around shooting headshots huh. like a food truck huh and i was like yeah innovation yeah look at it now yeah and i my favorite shot is of me and a dory jackson though but that's another story see he's no longer a i know i know so oh.
going to have to get back on those NFL contacts. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> One more question before sure. we are running out of time. But what advice would you give to students that want to pursue any type of art? Be true to it and never let anyone um, deter you from your passion. Because once you lose your passion, you lose everything. Mm -hmm. One of the things I see here at SC is that people, you know, the students are really determined and their visions are crystal clear for the most part. Mm -hmm. Whereas back in my day, we didn't always have that. Um, yeah. So, you know, come in. It, it's okay if you come here and don't know what you want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I think you should experience everything that college has to offer, that the, your, your curriculum has to offer, your major, or whatever. You know, you have four years to really decide what you want your, in what direction you want your life to go in. So here is where you just kind of take it and like, okay, yeah, I dig this and I dig that. Explore all the options. Yeah, but you know, find out what it is that you do best and what you like the most and go with it. I love it. One last yeah. question, what inspires you? Wow. I know um, it's kind of loaded to. No, you know, <laughs> it's funny because I just wrote this. I was in, um, I went home for Christmas and I was in, we have this uh, store called Kroger's, which is a grocery store. Yep. And there was a guy playing saxophone in the, the meat section. You know, this is like two days before Christmas and he's playing Oh Holy Night. And I, I was so inspired by that moment because I was the only one there listening to him mm -hmm. that I, I went home and started writing uh, my personal statement for my promotion dossier. So, uh, <laughs> But I'm, you know, I'm inspired by people. I'm inspired by uh, people who do good things. I love it. You know? Yeah, I'm absolutely. inspired by children and all kinds of things. I can so, see yeah. that. Thank you so much, Mickey, for coming yeah. on the show. This has been so lovely talking yeah. with you and getting to know you. And be sure to stay tuned or watch See You at USC every weeknight here on Trojan Vision at 6.30 p.m. You better. Yeah. See you next right. Wednesday. <laughs>